to the Chronicles, told by the Oracle, cases of the missing, murdered, and unsolved. I'd like to thank everyone for watching today, and don't forget to head over to thecertifiedroracle.com, where you'll find source information for today's episode. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss a case. Let's get started with Chronicle number 15, the James Thomas Stanley case. The year was 1974. MASH, Happy Days, and Chico and the Man were on floor model TV sets around America. Big Bear grocery stores had what all families wanted to try. Hamburger helpers, Swanson TV dinners, and plenty of jello to make the perfect mold for any occasion. For one man's family, none of that mattered, as they would never see the man they called son, daddy, friend, and husband again. James Thomas Stanley, known to all around him as Tommy or Tom, was 25 years old and stood 5 foot 8, weighing 140 pounds. He had light brown to blonde hair with blue eyes. He had a fair complexion and was wearing a partial denture plate in his upper mouth when he was last seen. Tom lived in Nitro, West Virginia growing up. He was the youngest as he had two older sisters. In 1963, the Stanleys would move to the Plains, Ohio. This was not a move that Tom wanted to make, as all of his friends were still in Nitro, West Virginia. They found a home on East 4th Street, where James Sr. began working for the Ohio State Patrol, where he gave driver examinations. In 1967, Tom would graduate the Plains High School, now known as Athens High. While in school, he met Patricia Hillen, and they became sweethearts. And along with the cliché, they ended up married with a daughter, Marie, born in 1968, shortly after graduation. However, with young love and a new baby comes responsibility that neither of them were ready for. And by December, the love had fizzled away and a divorce was granted. Also granted to Tom was the custody of his daughter, Marie. This caused him to move back home on East 4th Street with his parents and his infant daughter, this was not a problem, as it seems he was close to some extent with his family. After some time, Tom met and fell in love with a woman named Gail E. Fink. Her and Tom would marry in 1970. However, Gail's parents did not like the idea of her marrying Tom, and they had their daughter's marriage annulled. It should be noted, it does not state why they did not want her to marry Tom. Could she have been a minor for her parents to be able to annul the marriage? This did not stop the two who were in love. They headed off to Kings Island in Kings Mill, Ohio and got married once again. This time, Gail's parents did not fight the marriage and let them be. Shortly thereafter, Gail and Tom welcomed a baby girl into the world. After the baby came, the family now made up of the two daughters and Gail became somewhat of transients. Marie recalls that they all lived in Nitro, West Virginia for a little while. Then on to the Plains, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, and possibly Tennessee for a bit. Gail recalled one time Tom became manager at Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips. Soon Gail got tired of this lifestyle. Tom, at this point, now drove a delivery truck for a produce company in Columbus, Ohio. Things were not getting better between Gail and Tom, and in 1972 they split up. It should be noted that some places state he and Gail did not divorce until two months before Tom vanished. When Gail and Tom split, he decided it would be a better idea if Marie was in a stable home and felt she should go live somewhere else. That somewhere else would be in Nitro, West Virginia with his oldest sister Dee and her husband Don Carnes. The Carnes would adopt Marie. Tom remained in Marie's life and saw her often. In 1974, Tom was back in financial hardships, so he told people. He had gotten an apartment at 12 and a half Chicago Avenue in Columbus, Ohio, and was still driving a delivery truck for the produce company. When asked about this later on, no one in Tom's life could remember the name of the produce company. Did Tom not tell them, or did they forget? Is it possible that Tom was not working for a produce company at all, but rather doing a more shady occupation? We may never know. While living there, he kept in contact with his family, but would never really let them in or tell them about his day-to-day -day life. 
Around August of 1974, he was experiencing more financial troubles and was not making his child support payments to Gail for his youngest daughter. He had been in a minor traffic altercation and was set to appear in court. Tom did not go to the court date and no one was notified that he did not appear, and a warrant was never issued. Posing the question, did Tom have these troubles or were they a little made up? In September, Tom told some family he was leaving Ohio. He was in fear for his life and headed to Florida to reunite with an old friend named Hollywood, where he would never be able to come back to Ohio. This is said to be an abrupt move for Tom, as he did not pick up his last check, nor did he get the settlement check he was waiting on. One would think if he was so hard up for money, this is not something he would have left behind. So why did he? Could he have been afraid of someone at work, whatever that really was? Why was he never able to come back to Ohio by his own words? Had he gotten in with the wrong people? Was someone after him? Was he worried he would have to go back to work detail, also known as a work farm back then, because he could not pay Gail child support? The only one who has those answers is Tom. Tom was going around to family saying his goodbyes. He went to Nitro, West Virginia to tell his sister and daughter goodbye. While there, he gave his daughter a bracelet that had her name and Daddy Loves You, along with September 1974 inscribed on it. Tom told Marie it was for her birthday. She said, Daddy, my birthday is in July. He told her he knew, and this was probably the last time she would see him. This is an odd thing to tell your daughter. What had Tom gotten into that he was running from? The last known stop and sighting of Tom was at his younger sister Linda's home in Beckley, West Virginia. Tom left on the 18th of September. Just five days later, he left his sister's home seemingly on his way to Florida. A state trooper named A.W. Williams was sent to a call of an abandoned vehicle. When he arrived, he found the Fiat on the shoulder of I-95 in the northbound lane. The officer stated he believed the vehicle was there for at least 48 hours. There was no sign of his wallet in the vehicle or anything with his personal information on it. The other missing items were the photo albums he took with pictures of his daughters and family in it. It should be noted some places state his wallet was in the vehicle. However, D says that the officer was asked and no wallet was found in the vehicle or in the location of the vehicle. The keys were still in the ignition. There was no sign of a struggle nor were there any signs of Tom being there. Some items that were left in the vehicle were a bag of clothes, a pair of shoes, a shaving kit, and a toothbrush. The Fiat was taken back the day before the family went to get the vehicle. The family did not want to lose hope, and many years had gone by, but they went to Kinley, North Carolina to put up flyers, hoping someone had information on what had happened to Tom. The subject of Tom became too much to talk about, but Marie wanted answers. She began looking into her dad's disappearance. In 2001, Marie was able to get an age-progressed sketch done to what her dad might look like if he was 52 years old. In 2007, Marie talked to the FBI, who told her she should file a missing persons report on her dad and make it official, and it would help get him into the databases. So that is what Marie did, and now her dad is in all the databases. She is hopeful someone will remember something if nothing more than the name of the produce company he worked for. Marie is still holding out hope that one day she will know why her dad left and what happened. James and Martha have passed away, but before they did, they gave DNA to be placed in the national database, along with his sisters in case a hit ever comes up on a John Doe, or anyone who thinks they may be Tom. If you have any information on this case, Please call the Athens County Sheriff's Department at 740-593-6633. Once again, if you have any information, please contact the Athens County Sheriff's Department at 740-593-6633. Once again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so I can continue helping families of the missing, murdered, and unsolved. As always, this is the Roracle, signing off.